All right, and we are live. So welcome, Darren. We we're just talking off air. I'm excited to do a, a live calling session right in your backyard, right in your market. And so tell everybody real quick where, where right. you are located. And we are live. Oh, hold on, let me mute so that. Welcome, Darren. We we're just talking off air. There we go. Uh, so tell everybody kind of where you're located and where we're going to be calling today. I am located here in California, Northern California, um, the Bay Area. <clears throat> it's a pretty pretty vast market out this way. So we're going to be call, probably calling a few different uh, um, areas. That's for sure. So we'll be we'll be spreading uh, the love this morning. I love it. Yeah, and just for all of you that are watching, uh, I have never been to Northern California. So. What we do on these calls every week, every Friday, is we take one of our students that are in our uh, in our coaching program. Today, we've got Darren De Silva, and I call in their market as their ISA. My goal is to set appointments for Darren today, generate leads for a, for, for Darren today, and maybe more importantly is is hopefully offer a great learning opportunity for you, Darren, and then for everybody else that's watching out there is is really my big goal to help inspire people that prospecting doesn't have to be this big, huge, scary thing that you can have a natural conversation through a reverse selling methodology where conversations with prospects can go easy. Now, we don't know what we're gonna get, right? I'm gonna call, I've never been to Northern California. I have no idea about anything there. And, and I do that to, to share a mindset that, um, you know, the learning is in the doing, right? I've never called prospects ever in my life in Northern California. And I'm going to do it for the first time live on YouTube for the world to see, right? So there's a lot to be said for, for mindset. Certainly skills are important, but uh, mindset is, is ab, uh, as important, if not more. So what I want to do, Darren, how it's going to work is, so I got a local number. Uh, what did I get? Just want to make sure I pick the right. Well, it doesn't really matter because we're calling in a couple different places, right? Right. All right, cool. So I got um, 209. Okay. So that's that's actually where I'm in Tracy. That's all right, cool. That's my area code. Awesome. So what I'm gonna do is you sent me your your FISBOs and some for rent by owners. I'm gonna call through some. My goal, right? You don't know who's gonna answer, who's not. It's 8 30 in California, 11 30 here in Michigan. I'm gonna be calling through, hopefully I can get a couple contacts, um, have some success doing so. And then um, after I get through some of these conversations, you and I will have a nice dialogue. And then um, if we've got time, maybe you can jump on a couple calls and then I can give you some real-time feedback, real-time coaching. Sound fair? Sounds great. Awesome. <laughs> All right, cool. So let's jump right into it. And I'm gonna call <coughs> for sale my owner. Your message for okay, so they got a, they've got another number, so I'm gonna call the other number. And I'll always, I mean, I, I'm sure you do that too, right? I mean, if it's a for sale by owner, typically it's not like an expired one. There's 75 numbers you got to call through. Right. Where do you get your leads? Are you getting them from Vulcan right now? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So with a FISBO, I'm always gonna call both numbers for sure. Okay, no worries. Let's just keep rocking and rolling. And as I uh, have these conversations, if you've got your leads, uh, the leads that you emailed me over, you'll uh -huh. see who I'm talking to and, and how you have to follow up. Okay. Um, if you watched that last week, that's kind of how it's going to work. Okay. So what I'll what I'll say is I'm calling on behalf of my partner, right, Darren De Silva, and I'll have you follow up with the leads afterwards. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. Cool.
Your call has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. Nine. So he's got another number two, I will call. This is the only hard part about um, calling live. Everybody that's watching out there in YouTube land, it's hard because you wanna see me talk to somebody live and I wanna show it to you. But the also, the also, the reality is you can see how mundane and boring it is. And that's why a lot of people can't stand prospecting for so long. So there's some value in them seeing what it's really like, you know? Right. Which is, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I want to, I want to get through all seven FISBOs for sure. And then there's some mornings where they pick up on every call, right? Yeah. Isn't that funny? I know. <laughs> it's so true. So I think all the ones you sent me, you have not had a chance to have a conversation with them yet. Correct? Correct. Yeah. Some of them are newer than others, though. Uh, yeah, no worries. Come on. So, and then we'll switch over. Once I call through all these, we'll switch over to calling some for rent by owners as well. Are you starting, are those part of your daily prospecting uh, routine? Yeah, I'm, I'm a lot more comfortable, though. Like, I feel like I have FISBOs just dialed in. Um, my my struggle with the for rent by owners is like I'll get a lot of the property. Just want to make sure. Hold on. Damn. Hello. Hello. Leave a message. Oh. oh, you got me. <laughs> yeah, it got me too, actually. Dude, the uh, the voicemail. Hello. Hello. And then the voicemail picks up. It's cool. <laughs> so, so I'm going to dial the other one. But what were you saying about for for rent by owners? Yeah, I get I get a lot of like the property management companies, you know, like right when you call, it's like you're on a recorded line. You yeah. know, that's when I know I'm like, oh, shit. You I know? just hang up hang up and delete it. I mean, there's nothing to be had there, right? They're managing right. the company. If a person wants to sell it, they sell it with that company typically. Yeah, that's true. Northern California, <laughs> imagine there's a lot of investors out there that have property management companies. So let's just keep calling through these. How's, uh, how's your month going? Um, <clears throat> I've had better months. That's for sure. Yeah. But, um, I mean, I'm talking to a lot of people. I'm going to a lot of previews. Um, just like I was telling you earlier, you know, that one guy this week, um, I'm going to send him that text you suggested, you Good. know, just kind of just keep, keep moving forward. You know, Hello. can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Hey, this is Brandon. I'm a realtor. I was calling about the property for sale on Merrill street. Is that still available by chance? Did you, is it sold or do you have an offer on it? Well, it's supposed to close on the 30th. Oh, okay. So you already passed maybe inspection and appraisal? Right. Got it. Got it. Yeah. So I'm a local realtor. I guess my question for you was why I have you. I mean, do you feel pretty good about things or do you think it would make sense for us to maybe stay in touch if something falls through? Um, no, I don't think it's, uh, it's going to go through. You think it's going to go through, right? Yes. Can I ask you, I have you, I mean, are you guys staying right here in the area or where are you guys planning to move to? So, uh, we're in Idaho and my, uh, brother is living in Idaho. Okay. Yeah. 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 Ah, got it. Okay. So once this property is sold then you guys can kind of move on all together, is that right? Yeah. Good for you. <laughs> How, how's Idaho? Well, it's cold. Yeah. What, uh, what's the temperature there? 30s. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that is cold. And so uh, do you guys have any more properties in California that you potentially need to sell or is this it? No, this is it. Got it. Got it. Well, hey, I wish you best of luck. Uh, I may touch base with you next week just to make sure that this thing does get to the closing table. Because if something falls through, would you consider having a conversation with me to look at some other options? Well, I'd have to talk to my husband. 
of course. Yeah, I totally understand. What was your name? Brenda. Brenda. My, my name is Brandon. What I'm going to do, if you're okay with it, I'm going to have my business partner, Darren. I'll just have him maybe give you and your husband a call. We'll send you some information about us and our company. And if something falls through, maybe we can have a conversation with you and your husband to look at some other options. Fair enough? You got it. We'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. I mean, so they're already through inspection and appraisal. That one seems pretty firmed up, but that was the one that has an email address. It's it's lead number six on the CSV file you sent me. Got it. So I would follow up with them at least, um, they're, well, their email's right there. But that's a potential. I would put them in your in your weekly follow up and follow that way that thing through um, to the closing table because it's an out of town owner too, right? Mm -hmm. So that's even better. If something falls through, there's a high need for them to get something done. Let's call through some other ones. You have any questions on that call at all? Or is it that was pretty simple, right? No, I mean I'll be honest with you. I me personally, I probably would have just ended the call. So just seeing, you know, after she said she's in escrow, so just hearing you do that and, you know, just keep moving forward, you know, gave me a lot of good information, you know? Yeah. Because um, remember, I mean, when we're calling for sale by owners, remember a lot of them fall out of escrow, right? She's pretty far in the process. What'd she say? She's closing on the 30th in 10 days, but who knows? You know what I mean? Like, a lot of those FISBOs fall out of escrow and that's where they list immediately because that's where they've, they've had enough, right? right. Imagine, imagine that they've gone through the ringer, they yeah. got the fire and thing falls apart. They're like, I'm done. I mean, right. agent. somebody help me. <laughs> yeah. And, and then that's the other thing, Darren, when you hear me talk about in our coaching calls, staying in the pocket, you know, not throwing the ball away so fast, that would be an example of that call right there. It's like, well, I'm going, I'm on a contact anyways. So I'm going to monetize the effort that I've already put forth. I've right. mustered up the courage to make the calls. Oh, Somebody yeah. answered, I'm here now. Can I monetize a no into a potential? That, that's the, the methodology there. Right. I like that. Yeah. Hey there. Good morning. This is Brandon. I'm a realtor. I was calling about the property for sale. Is that still available by chance? I'm still trying to get it in selling shape. Got it. I understand. So is it, are you open? To, no, you're doing okay. What, what, tell me more. Wow. So is it even potentially ready to show at this point or you, you have to get it, got to get some stuff done before that happens? Got it. Oh my gosh. I know. And I don't blame you. I mean, so, so that property, is it vacant now? Uh, I'm doing distance teaching out of it. We just refinished the oak flooring in the front and we're going to be putting laminate down here in the back. Okay. So, so you're living there now. Yeah. We're mostly moved out. That kind of brought things to a, a much slower pace. I see. Yeah. It makes sense. And so did you already find a new property or are you guys still looking for somewhere to go? Uh, maybe you can help me on this. Um, we're kind of up in the air with that ballot in the past. Um, Cause I've lived here for nearly 30 years. Okay. And my big question is if I sell this house and move now, I don't get to transfer my tax base. But is it, is it after April 1st, I get to take the tax base or? Yeah. So, so you've been in this specific property for 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you, you should be able to get a tax credit. I would to really give you the best advice. I'd absolutely want to have a conversation with your CPA for sure. But based on this, and this was your primary residence the whole time. Yeah. 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 You should absolutely be able to get a tax credit. So let me ask you this really quick. I mean, what has you thinking about selling this property versus maybe just staying there? Yeah. <laughs> right. 
No, I mean, really, having a 7-Eleven around the corner gets hit, and the Lucky Studs ran in. It's like, you get outside the Bay Area, it's a different world. Mm. Yeah, and well, I'm with you. I, I wouldn't argue that for sure. I mean, and I guess, what was your first name? I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Randy. Randy, my name is Brandon. And so I guess my question for you, Randy, too, is once the time makes sense, I know you're selling it on your own. If for some reason that doesn't work out the way that you want, would you consider meeting with me and my business partner potentially to look at some other opportunities assuming we can help you get this property sold at a dollar amount that gets you what you need. Yeah, I'm probably going to have to go through all this once we finally get this thing ready to hit the market. Um, I thought we had a reasonable chance of getting it done by the election, but that obviously didn't happen. So I, I don't want to take up your time or go through all the hoops and find out, hey, we're another two months off. You know what I mean? Yeah, it makes a ton of sense. I guess let's do this. I, I think that it's smart for us not to agree to anything to at this point. But what I'd like to do is is potentially have my business partner, Darren, to come look at the property one day next week, maybe have a conversation with some of the things that we can do to help you get it sold when the time is right. And then you can decide, Randy, if working together with us would make any sense. Would that be fair? Yeah, I'm also looking for someone to fix the garage door. Okay. All right. No worries. We can make some recommendations for you there as well. San Lorenzo is just, Bohannon, okay, he came up with um, assembly line houses, but he also came up with some crazy ideas. The front door is not a 36, it's a 34 that nobody carries. Right. So most of these houses were built without garages, so all your garages are kind of unique. Mine's uh, a detached garage. Um, at some point, um, and I think I remember this as a kid, the garage door, the springs broke. So my old man just cut the door in half and put hinges on it. Mm. <laughs> okay. You know, the, the wood, you know, the wood was 70 years old. It brought it out. I built a really nice square door and tried to put it into the garage and discovered, well, over the years, this thing has shifted a little bit and it needs to be reframed, I guess, to put the new hinges back in. Mm. Um, it, it's really an odd size. It, it would cost thousands to put a roll-up door in it. So, yeah, I mean, things like that. yeah, it makes sense. And, and and when Darren looks at it, I mean, he can kind of take a, look, a closer look and make some recommendations. Are you typically home in the afternoons or or early evenings? Um, broadcasting kind of through from like uh, nine o'clock till two thirty. Got it. Okay, so if we were to get together, it'd be like some somewhere around three, four o'clock something. Would that would that work for you? Yeah. What I'm going to do when we hang up, Randy, I'm going to have Darren call you back. Uh, he's in a meeting right now. I'm going to have him call you back as soon as he's out and he can get some time booked with you. Maybe you want to do like what, Tuesday, Wednesday next week? What would work better for you? Well, I mean, right now, it's just a big mess on the inside while we're trying to finish the painting. So give me, give me a week or so to finish the painting on the inside and even probably put down the laminate for you. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, it's just a huge mess and I kind of was an art major, so putting up the pictures originally, me, I can look at it and say, hey, yeah, I know what this is going to look like. I guess these people will look at it. Well, it's not a picture up or yeah. no, it's not. Yeah. No, it's not. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, let's do this. Uh, I'm going to email you a copy of our resume. So you can at least have that on file. And then I'll have Darren follow up and, and get some time scheduled with you. What's the best email for you typically? All right, got it. So I will. Hey, what's, your, what's your fee for selling? What What's our fee for selling? Did you say that? Yeah. Yeah. So we have what we call our flexible commission program, Randy, and so that'll be one of the first things Darren goes through when he meets with you. And so there's a couple different options for you, and we'll do what makes the most sense because obviously you want to make sure that you net the most money from the sale, correct? Well, yeah. And uh, the one guy in my bicycling group, my Christmas bicycling group, he's just standard 6%. Yeah. Yeah. And, and sometimes that, mm -hmm. and right now in this market, this is, well, this is always going to be one of the biggest colleges in San Lorenzo, yeah. five car driveway. And it's like, I know this is going to go top of the market. Well, especially now when there's only eight houses for sale, you're really going to bust me the full amount. 
Yeah. And you're probably, you're probably right. And so I think when you interview Darren, he'll walk you through all the different options that we have. And then you can decide kind of what makes the most sense from there. Does that sound reasonable? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, all right, Randy, have a good morning and I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Okay. Bye, Bye now. There you go, my friend. So I, so I muted the email part that didn't come through. Right. Right. I was like, Oh, I was trying to write it down. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, since we're live on YouTube, I, I was right, gonna, right. Right. so, so there you go. So there's a listing opportunity. This is what so many people ask us like that, that we teach, you know, like, can you set a listing appointment on the first contact with the for sale by owner? And I always respond with absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Right. You can. So you kind of just heard that. Kind <laughs> of uh, what did you hear happening and, and what questions do you have? I mean, I heard you go right past the preview. I mean, you didn't really even get into the normal um, preview script. You went straight to like the listing um, script, which I thought was, um, you know, made made the, the deal right there, um, yeah. you know, and he was completely open to meeting um, about selling his home and he even went straight to 6%. Usually I got to fight people on 6%, right? right. So, right. I mean, he, he, you know, you let him kind of talk. Um, so yeah, I mean the thing for, so that's just the thing, right? So when I talk about inside of our coaching group, being more intentional with our conversations, <laughs> what I mean by that is first and foremost, every conversation that we have, we are in the business of helping people sell their homes. Would you agree? Yes. So therefore their problem is the house that they have to sell. Our solution is listing it and getting it sold. So I'm going to go for the listing up front using a reverse selling methodology where I'm not hammering and pressuring the consumer. You just heard that. If I can get the listing appointment first, wouldn't it make more sense for us to just skip past the preview and go right to the listing appointment? Of course you would say yes. Right. So what happens is when a newer agent increases their skills, increases their confidence, my recommendation for you, Darren, is that you do that on every contact is that, uh, you ask for the listing appointment first and foremost. Okay. It's only if you don't get that, that, that you're, that you're going to ask for a preview. Now you're okay. new to the system, right? So you're, you're using the preview appointment. I'm doing that strategically to help you get confidence with prospecting, right? Were you right. on a coaching call yesterday by chance? Um, no, I had an appointment in the morning. I had to miss right. out on that. Yeah. So, so here's why. Well, you should be asking me, well, Brandon, why do you have me uh, going on preview appointments right now instead of just going after listings like you just did? So go ahead and ask me why. Brandon, why are you having me do preview appointments rather than go straight for the listing? Yeah, because the reality is, you know, do you know the story of how to boil a frog? I heard, I heard you talk about it on one of the calls, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's what we're doing with you, Right. If I just threw you right in that seat doing outbound direct prospecting for the first time in your life, right? You've never done this before real estate, correct? No, I sold cars for five years. So, I mean, it was just different. People are walking yeah. into your doors, though. People correct? are walking in. Yeah. Or, you know, you would cold call people, but it wasn't like, like the, you know, this. Yeah. You have people walking in. So, you have people walking in. So now you're yeah. in an outbound sales position. So right. if I were to just say, okay, dude, I want you to sit there and set listing appointments before you have confidence, before you have experience meeting with people, because now you're setting a lot of preview appointments. You said at the beginning of the call, dude, I really got this FISBO thing down, correct? Yes. Well, now that you have this confidence, right? Now you can shift over to having conversations like I just did. You've been on enough previews. You have made enough for sale by owner contacts where now it makes sense for you to shift your strategy. You with me? Yeah. Yeah. So, so what I recommend specifically for you is right now moving forward today and, and, and beyond is that you do focus your time on looking for the listing appointment first. And if you can't get that, then you go preview second, where right now you're going preview first listing appointment second. Right. Cool. And all I'm going to do, and, and the reality is we won't know until we make the contact with the for sale by owner, which direction we're going to go. That's what I was going to ask. Yeah. yeah. It's all how, based on the prospect. Right. Because it seemed like you, you didn't, because normally the first or second question is, hey, are you open to working with a buyer's agent? 
So, and I didn't even hear you go that route. You just went straight into, you know, the listing questions. And this so is how do you why, change? I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. The reason Darren is because this is why it's so important to internalize the script so that I can spend all my time listening to the prospect. I heard right from the get go, that was a listing opportunity where most agents that don't really, they can't listen because they're worried about what they have to say next on the script. Right. would not have heard that opportunity. They would have gone down a different path. So what happens is when you internalize a script, when you no longer have to worry about what you're going to say, you can really listen for the opportunity. And I heard it and I pounced on it. Right. Right. So, so make sure you got that lead, right. You're going to uh, follow up with him. I got his email address. I'll give it to you right after this session, right after we get off YouTube and uh, email him your resume. And Is that then, the guy under Randall? Uh, let me see. So it was Randy. Yes, so. yes, yes, yes. Yep. Correct. Okay. And it sounds like he wants to meet after uh, next week, after Thanksgiving week. Okay. And so you're going to call him, set the listing appointment. And you're going to go there and interview for the job of selling his house. You'll send me the email you said? Yeah, 100%. Okay, cool. Cool. Uh, all right. So what I want you to do is um, I want to see if you can make a couple of contacts with some of these, the last three FISBOs on that list. Can okay. you pull those up and, and then I'm going to have you dial through the next three and then we'll jump into some for rent by owners. Okay. So starting with Christian. Yep. All right. All right, here we go. Cool. Hi, good morning. My name's Darren. I'm a local realtor here in Danville. I was calling about your property on Mission Drive. Is that still available by chance? No, right now it's not. Okay. Did you guys just take it off the market? Or are you guys still interested in selling if you got the right offer? Oh, yeah. We're going to sell it, but I'm a broker, so I'll list it myself. Oh, nice. Okay. There you go. Hey, that's a great way to save some commission, right? <laughs> Okay, so so you're. It sounds like you're pretty much covered then. Yep. Got it. Okay. Well, thank you for your time. Thanks. All right. Bye. bye. Delete. What do I do on that one? I mean, she's a broker. Hang up. Delete. Right. Okay. All right. Amazing how many realtors sell by owner. It's very weird. All right. Next one. That was a good one too. I've called that before. Oh, that lead, that lead before? Yeah. Well, you see how many, I mean, it's good. We're calling through all your non-contacts and you're right. making contact. We're making a contact with a lot of them. Five, five, zero. One, zero, nine, six. Hi, you reach Francis yourself, but I'm sorry, I can't get to it right now. But if you leave your name and number, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Okay. And there's just one number on that one. Yep, no worries. We'll just call that last one, see if we get another contact. Four, five, two, five, three, two, eight. David. I actually just saw oh, there's two numbers too. I don't know if you want me to call. Yeah, call the other one real quick and then we can flip over to some for rent by owners. Okay. Okay. 
I'm sorry. The person you are trying to reach has a voice. Never mind. <laughs> no worries. All right. So let's, I'm going to flip over. I'm going to call a, a few for rent by owners. Now, remind me, you said you are calling them daily or not? Um, I wouldn't say daily like Fizbo's. I'd say maybe a few times a week. Um, just because, like I said, it's like majority of the calls I make are like to preview. Once in a while, I'll get I'll get the owner on the phone. But I'm still, you know, I'm still a little new with that. So got it. Got it. Okay, cool. Let's see what we can muster up. Because again, I think as you get more and more experience, you're going to really like working with this type of owner because their motivation is high and the competition is very, very low. So the conversations you'll find are, um, they tend to be a lot easier. So, and it's easier to generate a lot of leads through this source. All right, so so did you just hear that one? Yeah, that's, that's what I'm talking about right yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. So we don't call, just everybody watching, for rent by owner is somebody that owns an investment property that's looking to rent it out. So if you call and it's a property manager, it's, it's like it's like Darren just called a for sale by owner who is an agent or is a broker. It's the same thing. We hang up the call, we delete the lead. It's the exact same thing. They already have representation. All right, that lead right there, that is the owner. I want you to text that one right now. Okay. And it's Ann, it's the third one down. So when I call and the voicemail picks up and it's the prospect's name, I text it immediately after I hang up. And all I want you to say, did you see it? Her number or did you type something? Uh, no, did you see her number? Yeah. All right, all I want you to do is just say, um, um, just type her name and say, Ann, question mark, and hit send. And let's see if we can get her on a call. And she's going to respond, yeah, who's this? Just say, this is Darren. And I was, and I'm, was curious if your property on the street name was still available for lease. Okay. Because if it's... So that's this. That's after she responds. We want to oh, see. Oh, she said yes. She said all right. yes. All right. So let's let's keep rolling there with this. All right. So this is good. Just say, hey, this is Darren. <laughs> and funny. I, yeah. See, it's good. That's the best text you could ever send. <laughs> right. Just the name. Okay. Yeah. This is Darren. Right. Um. Uh, and I was inquiring. Okay. About the property. On, and I'll spell this for you, it's called Glasgow, G-L-A-S is in Sam, G-O-W. For lease, is it still available, question mark? <coughs> All right, sent. And so if she says, yes, it is, then just say, great, I just had a couple questions. Can you jump on a quick call? Is she typing? Oh, it's a sending. You have an iPhone or Android? I have an Android, I'm an Android guy. Wah, wah. <laughs> I just bought my girl and the new iPhone though yesterday. Isn't that so, interesting? Yeah. Why didn't you buy her the new Android? Because she's in. She just knows how to use the iPhone. I'm and, just kidding. I'm just giving yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, because the iPhone's a lot better, is what I was hoping you. Were <laughs> <laughs> There's still a good debate. There's still yeah. a good debate there. So while we're waiting for a response, I'm going to answer some questions in here, Darren. So. Okay. Uh, so Matt just says, hey, why is the competition so low with for rent by owners? Well, yeah, I mean, a lot of real estate agents, Matt, when they think of prospecting, I mean, everything you hear about, every training, every YouTube video, all talks about expires and for sale by owners. 
it's very rare that you hear people talk about the for rent by owner. And that's number one. Number two, real estate agents don't think about that as a lead source. So they don't even have it on their business plan. They don't know how to approach them. So where the low hanging fruit, the thing that everybody's going after the for sale by owner and the expired, the for rent by owner, it's rare that you see that an agent has absentee owners and for rent by owners on their business plan that they call every single day. Did she respond to you? Not yet. All right. She was cool. instant on the other one. Let's see what she said. That's our no problem. All right. Let me, let me call a couple other. <coughs> All right. Let's go back. And then you guys all go back. I'm going to make a couple more dials and then um, I'll answer some questions for you, Darren. And then I'll answer some questions from everybody that's watching and hopefully that you get some value out of that as well. And then uh, we'll see what we can do. I'm glad that you got a listing opportunity though. I mean, that's the best. Yeah. If you can get a listing opportunity at one of these sessions. That's I'm happy with that. Yeah. And San Lorenzo, man, that's, that's a hefty sales price right there. Just, just so you sure. know. Good. Yeah. You're going to give me half the commission, right? <laughs> right. Exactly. All right, cool. Send you a nice little gift. All right. Perfect. This call may be recording. Oh, property manager. We don't want that. Maybe that Iron Man helmet that just automatically opens. Dude, if you got that for me, I'd be forever grateful. My <laughs> issue with it is I, you know, I read about it. I was going to buy them. I'm really concerned about how like cheap that one was. It was right. like $30. And then I was reading a bunch. I'm like, this is a scam. This is a scam. This yeah, is that's a scam. what I thought too. Oh, yeah. that's right. We talked about that. Yeah. There's no way that you, I mean, my Iron Man helmet that I bought, it's all plastic, right? It was like 300 bucks. Those were like metal and opening. How could that be? <laughs> right. It's a scam for sure. I totally agree. It looks sweet. I wish it wasn't. Oh. All right, what'd she say? I have one person I'm doing a background check on. If it doesn't work out, I can let you know. All right, so, all right, cool. So now, um, did you already ask her? I got a couple of questions. Can you jump on a quick call? No. All right, just, so let's do that now. So just say, okay. just say, um, yes, that would be great. I just had a couple questions. Are you able to jump on a quick call? Question mark. Because remember, the text is designed to get on a call, right? The call is designed to get an appointment. So depending on how she responds to that, if she says, I can't get on a call for whatever reason, then we can do some other stuff with, with uh, our approach. All right, so while you're doing that, all right, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna kind of go through all the chats and all the questions. I'm gonna get through as many as I can, okay? Um, all right. Chelsea says, Chelsea Cummings, should you always get a area code number for the area you're calling in? Um, no, the only reason I'm doing that, that's a good question. The only reason I'm doing that is because I'm in a completely different state, right? So if I was in, like in my market, my area code is 248, but there's certainly other area codes in Michigan that I call all the time. But even that person that I'm calling knows it's a Michigan person calling. So it's not necessary for you to get a different area code for every like city or county in your state. The only reason I'm doing it is because, again, I'm calling into another state. So because uh, I don't want to get this, the, the dumb objection with like, hey, you're calling from Michigan, you know, like that would just be stupid. So I'm just trying to uh, eliminate those objections. She said she's working, by the way. She said we can talk later. Awesome. All right. All right. So cool. So I would try to uh, set a phone appointment right now. So I would just say, cool, just say, uh, no worries. Um, I'm free this afternoon. 
between four and five o'clock, or if you're free, then just let me know, but then try to set a phone appointment. Okay. Wouldn't it be cool if we just sat here all day and worked together on this stuff? I know. It's not, I mean, we're great momentum here. I know. So. Emilio says, where do I look up the do not call list? I don't look up the do not call list. So in this case, we're getting our leads from Vulcan 7. And so they are producing our calling list for us. Um, let's see. All right, so, so Rob, that's a good question. Rob says, well, my broker doesn't have a flexible commission program. Well, I, the only reason I respond that way is because um, it's because I'm not going to take the prospect's bait. I'm not going to have a conversation about commissions over the phone. So when I say flexible commission, if you're one of our students, you know we, we, we have a structure but I'm still talking about a 6% commission. I'm just not going to get into this big dissertation about commissions. That would be called taking the bait. So you heard the prospect ask me, Darren, you heard him too, right? Like, hey, what do you charge? Right. Well, the untrained agent takes the bait and starts getting into this big conversation about uh, commissions and this is what I charge. That You do not want to do that. Why? Because all we're looking to do right now is set the appointment conversation uh, about commissions should only be had at a listing appointment. Otherwise, you're just going to do exactly what I said, which is, hey, that'll be one of the first things. That's my commission objection handler over the phone. Say it's a great question. Commissions will be one of the first thing Darren uh, discusses when he meets with you. And then most people can really, it's, it's easy to get past that objection. Did she respond to you? Not yet. All right. So Jason says, how do you hold your commission rate at 6% without negotiating, without negotiating? How do you handle that when most of the time they're asking over the phone? Yeah. Ho hopefully I just answered that. So, so Jason, if, if you're my prospect and you talk about, or they say, Hey, what do you, what do you charge again? What, the, the, the only reason we're on the phone, never forget this, the only purpose of the phone is to do what, Darren? To set the appointment. That's it. That's it. So for all of you that are not in our coaching program, that'll be information for you. You do not take bait over the phone. What is your What do you charge, Darren, is a baited question. So let me give you another one. Um, what are you going to do to sell my house? Baited question. Uh, have you ever sold homes in my neighborhood? Baited question. We're not taking any of that bait. So how we respond to that every single time is, hey, that's a great question. And that'll, and that'll be one of the first things Darren and I cover when we meet. And then we're going to focus on getting the appointment because it's too easy for a prospect to push you away on the phone versus when you're face to face. Darren, you know that, but most of these guys uh, don't understand that. Maybe, maybe they do, maybe they don't, but that's the reason why we don't overcome objections on the phone. We handle objections face to face. Cool. Uh, what questions do you have for me, Darren? I got a couple minutes left. I want to make sure that, that uh, anything that's on your mind or questions that you have that I, that I answer them for you. Um, <clears throat> I mean, you've been pretty thorough. Um, I guess so. Let's say this for rent by owner, um, you know, texting back, what do I, what do I talk about? You know, okay. on appointment. All right. So let's role play the for rent by owner script. Okay. Okay. Let's do that. Let's end with a nice role play for them. Then I'll answer some questions for you and then we'll, uh, we'll get back to work. So, okay. so when we get on the phone with her, what, what is her name again? Her name is Ann. Ann. All right. So ring, ring, ring. Hello. Hey, Ann. Uh, it's Darren De Silva. How are you? I'm doing good, Darren. Good, good. Hey, really quick. I was, you and I were texting this morning, but I, uh, so I'm a local realtor. I had a couple of questions about the property for lease. Obviously you told me you're looking at a background check. I was curious with the market, you know, and values in, in the Valley being so high right now. 
if, if maybe you were considering selling that property right now versus leasing it out? Um, I didn't really think about it. Um, I mean, I guess it would just all depend on how much I could get for it. Okay. Now that's what I'm going to, I'm going to handle that route. Now tell me, no, I'm just going to, I'm just going to hold on to it as a rental. I'll give you both scenarios. That's going to happen every single for rent by owner call, every absentee owner call. No, I, I was thinking I'm probably just going to hang on to it through the holidays and, you know, just rent it out. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. And so the, the, the lease that you're looking at, is that another 12 month lease? Yes. Yeah. Got it. So, so values continue to skyrocket like they have uh, at the end of this lease that you're potentially looking at right now it, at that point, would, are you going to consider possibly selling it if values continue to go up? Um, I'm, I might. Okay, yeah, cool. Let, let's do this. Uh, and really I don't mind. I, I'm just going to do, uh, I'm going to send you a quick email with my resume so you can keep that on file. I'm also going to send you a quick price analysis and so you can see what the value of the property looks like today. And then maybe you and I can touch base. I'll, I'll follow up with you next year when it gets closer to the end of your lease. And we can have a conversation to see what the market looks like at that point to discuss whether or not it makes sense to sell it. Would that be fair? Yeah, that's fair. Cool. What, what is the best email for you typically? Okay, got it. Cool. I'll send you an email. I'll get you that price analysis e either today or first thing Monday morning. And then I'll follow up with you, like I said, next year. And we can have that conversation at that point. Sound fair? Yeah, that's fair. Awesome. Boom. There's that one. So I generate a lead. Now, if she says, no, I'm hanging on to this forever, there's no lead to be had. But you told me, yeah, after this year, I'm potentially looking at selling. Okay. So, so that's a lead generated. Now she says, uh, you said, well, potentially depending on what I could get. So now I go right into, okay, great. Well, why don't we do this? And, and really, I don't mind. Why don't I do a quick pricing analysis I will email it to you, Ann, this evening. We can talk about the numbers and what it would look like as far as selling the property right now. And if the numbers make sense, maybe you and I could, and, uh, you and I could uh, schedule some time to get together, walk through exactly what I could do to help you get the property sold, and then you can decide if working together makes any sense or not. Fair enough? Yeah, that's fair. And you know the appointment setting script. Right. So those are both paths. And so- okay. That's, are you calling absentee owners yet? No, I haven't invested in those yet, but okay. that's something I'd like to, I'd, I'd like to get there. Yeah. Northern California or California in general is the state that has more absentee owners than the rest of the country combined. Oh, wow. So in San Diego uh, County, uh, I got one of my, one of my great students there. I think there's 30,000 absentee owners there in the whole state of Michigan. There's like 10,000. Oh, wow. So, and, and that's all he's doing right now. He'll sell 20, 30 homes a year, all from one lead source. Because people in California are constantly buying, selling, buying, selling, buying, selling, buying, selling. This, this tenant was a jerk, so I'm selling it, right? So there's a great opportunity for you and no other agents are calling. That's the greatest thing. How do you get that lead source? Uh, so we use a company, you have access to them through our program called The Share Group. So he gives you insane discount. I think it's nine cents a lead. Oh, wow. Okay. Their cell phone number and email address. So, so in, inside of our online portal training portal uh -huh. under, under resources, there's a link right to uh, the discount website. Okay. I'll take a look at that. Yeah. So, so you really will. I would really highly recommend that you look at that lead source. Was that her again? No. It's funny when you get a text message on Android, it sounds like the sky is falling. <laughs> well, dude, good I'll stuff. Have change it up. I'll have to change it up then. I love it. So listen, I want to, uh, I'm going to kind of like, you know, the plan, right? I'm going to go through this with, with a lot of our students and do these live calling sessions. Right. I want to get you back on. Right. I think uh, I, I like, I like working with all of our students, but for some, I think you and I are completely on the same page. We see things very similar. We also look alike. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> right. That makes it work better. <laughs> yeah. So uh, good stuff, man. Um, I think for you, I guess my last kind of closing thoughts is working really on two things that, that we talked about in this session. One is um, being intentional with asking for the listing opportunity. And then two, 
staying in the pocket longer, not being so quick to give into immediate resistance. Because remember, you're no different than the prospect. You're going to go walk into a store and that person's going to ask you the same question every time, which is what? When I walk into a store? Yeah. How can I help you? And what do you say every time? Um, I'm good. I'm just looking. That's right. So there's no different when you make these phone calls. There's the initial resistance. So the second thing you, I would think that you want to work on is not giving in to initial resistance. It's just, it's just initial. You could say, hey, I was calling to give you a million dollars. And they say, no, I'm not interested. Right? It's just the initial resistance. So the second thing is staying in the pocket. Say, I totally get it. Right? Just come off with that agreeable acknowledgement and then ask another question. That's staying in the pocket. Those would be the two big takeaways, I think, from this session, at least, that, that I would think that you're going to want to focus on the most. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Awesome, man. Well, listen, have a great Thanksgiving. Let's get Thanks. back to work. So what is yeah. your contact goal for today? Um, today, I'm going to make 15 contacts for me. It. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do today. Yeah, you got a bunch of for rent by owners on there, man. I would hammer those out. You, you will love that conversation. Yeah, and that tech strategy I really like too, um, because then you can avoid two property management with those oh, specifically. So yeah. I really like that. And she was just like instantly, and you know, so I and that's a way to know that I'm talking to the owner, which I that's I right. Like. So so I want you to do that on any lead source where you call and the voicemail picks up and says, "Hey, this is Brian," and the lead says, "Brian." With Fizbo's expireds, anytime it does that, don't leave the voicemail, shoot a text immediately, say Brian, question mark, and then try to lead that conversation to a phone call. A phone call. Okay. Cool. Sweet. Yeah. Thank you, Brandon. This was fun. Hey, no worries. We'll do it again soon. Um, and uh, ha have a great Thanksgiving, dude. Have a great weekend and have a productive day today. All right. Don't forget that email so I can get you that Iron Man helmet, though. Yeah, I'm going to <laughs> I'm going to send it to